Hi everyone, it's Jennifer McGuire. Today's video is again a little bit different. This is one that I did as a tutorial for Split Coast Stampers and I'll link to them here and in my description below. This video is packed with a bunch of techniques but I think you'll really like them. I really love the look of a stamped image that's been colored and then an inked background behind it. Now this is achieved through masking, however sometimes cutting a mask of a stamped image is tricky or takes too long. So I have three simple techniques for you today that are great for masking those kind of images. The first is masking with glossy accents. Glossy accents is just a clear product that you can put on something to give it some shine. There are other products you could use also. But today I'm going to show you how to use that as a tool for masking. And that's what I did on these stamped images here. So I stamped these Mama Elephant Pandas, I just think they're absolutely adorable, onto some white cardstock that I uh, have cut down with an Avriel frame that's got some faux stitching on the edge. And I'm just coloring these guys with some Copic markers, just added touches of coloring and stamped some hearts and colored those also. Now you'll notice I have put um, some tape around the edge of my die cut piece here to mask off the edge so that we can ink over this. So after I've completely colored my little guys here, I'm covering them with a thick coat of Glossy Accents. Glossy Accents is really easy to use. I squirt a bunch of it in the center of the image and then I use the nozzle to kind of push it to cover all of my image. So you want to make sure that you go right up to the edge, but don't go over the edge because anything that has Glossy Accents on it here will resist or mask the ink that we put above it. So if you go outside of the lines, that will show up. But actually, it's pretty easy to do. To do. And if you have super tiny places that you need to get into, you could use a needle to push the glossy accents into it. And it's pretty easy to do. Now if you do have little bubbles, I just pop those with a needle. It doesn't take long at all. And we also have the little hearts up here where I need to cover it with glossy accents too. Basically, you put glossy accents over anything that you want to resist the ink. Now before we do this, you need to leave lots of time for that image to dry. I also decided to white heat emboss a sentiment on the bottom of my piece here so that it resists also the ink that we put on top. I'm putting some tape also along the bottom here so that I can have a blue sky above their feet and a green grass below their feet. So I'm using Distress Ink because it's my favorite ink to kind of blend a background. And I have an ink blending tool. This is the Salty Ocean color. It's just beautiful. And I'm going to apply that over the background. And notice that the glossy accents is resisting the ink we're putting on top. And we keep our pandas nice and white and clean. So I'm just applying that blue ink, wiping all of the extra ink off of my little panda so it doesn't rub off the glossy accents. I'm going to move my mask up there so that I can go ahead and color the area below, below their feet to be green. This is the mowed lawn distress ink. You could really use pretty much any kind of dye or pigment ink to apply color over these backgrounds, but I think the distress inks work really well to blend. So now we have green down on the bottom there, and you can see our white sentiment also resisted the ink. And we can remove our mask now. And you'll see that not only are the pandas masked because of the glossy accents, but the tape leaves just a nice little frame around our coloring there. Very easy to do. So there you have the first way that you can do masking, and that is to put glossy accents over the stamped image. And the nice thing about this is you end up with that clear shine over your images, which is really fun also. This brings us to the second way that you can mask a stamped image and create an inked background over it. And this is by covering it with a clear coat of embossing powder. I find that this is best if you have stamped images like this one with lots of tiny little details that might be hard to cover with glossy accents or to fussy cut a paper mask. I have this lovely stamp from Clearly Besotted. I just love these daisies and I really wanted a sky behind them. I am again starting with a white die cut from an Avery L die, and I'm going to mask off the four sides. I'll get those other two sides in a moment. I'm going to stamp this with a Copic Friendly black ink. Now you'll notice that I stamped kind of off onto the masking tape there. I'm going to wipe that away because I don't want that to smear as we're coloring. And now I'm going to go ahead and color this with my Copic markers. Again, you could color this any way you wanted to. You could do colored pencils, you could do watercolor, anything you want. You can just put the clear embossing powder on it when you're done. Now say you had a stamped image that was solid, like a solid flower. That would be even easier because all you have to do is stamp that solid image in whatever ink you want, then stamp right on top of it again with an embossing ink, and then put on your clear embossing powder. So really there are many ways you can put the clear embossing powder on top of this. 
Today I'm going to be using an embossing pen. This is the Versamark pen and it puts down, puts down a clear sticky ink just like a Versamark ink pad. So it's really easy to go into these tight little places and quickly put a clear coating of ink on top of it. And then we can go in with our clear embossing powder on top of that. Now I'm just doing small sections of the flower at once, but you could by all means go in and color the entire flower or the entire image with the embossing pen and then put on the clear powder. I just wanted you to be able to see that shine in the areas where I put the powder. If after you did your clear embossing you seem to think that there might be little cracks or crevices where ink could get through, like if your clear embossing doesn't look very smooth, you could go in and do another layer of clear embossing on top of that. But I seem to find that this worked fine with one coat of clear embossing powder, but it does depend on the powder that you use. I'm using Hero Arts Clear here. So after a few minutes, I'll have a clear coating of clear embossing powder on top of all of my flowers, completely protecting it and masking it from the ink we're about to put on top of it. Again, I think this technique is best when you have a super detailed image like these flowers that would be hard to cover with a clear um, coat of glossy accents or hard to cut a mask for. So now that all of my flowers are completely covered, it's time to do our inked background. So I need to put my mask on the other two sides here. I'm just gonna use painter's tape this time. You can use any kind of tape here, even washi tape works. And this will give me a nice defined edge. Now I'm coming in once again with Distress Ink and my ink blending tool. And this time I'm putting down tumbled glass. That's a very soft sky color. And so you can do a light background this way. However, I decided I wanted it to be a little more intense, so I'm coming in with the Salty Ocean Blue Distress Ink color once again. Now you could mist over this, you could do maybe a wash of watercolor over this. There are many things you can do, and that clear embossing will resist whatever you put on top, masking the flowers underneath. So now I'm going to remove my tape and look at that nice defined edge that you get by putting that tape down before you do the inking. Now one thing I did want to mention is you do end up with the clear coating of embossing powder on top of this when you're done. If you wanted to, you could put a piece of scrap paper on this and then put a hot iron on top of that and it will remove the clear embossing from the flowers when you're done. Okay, so now we're on to the third method that I wanted to share today, and that is masking with rubber cement. And to be honest with you, I think this is the one that I like the most. I think it's so awesome, and you end up with a matte finish. It's like nothing was ever there. You don't have that clear coating on it. So that's what I did here for this little girl. I covered her with rubber cement and then did a fun inked background on top of it to create a night sky. This adorable little girl image is from this My Favorite Thing stamp set. And I am once again going to stamp it onto an Avriel white die cut and I have again masked the four sides so we have a nice defined edge. Once again, I'm going to be using Copic markers to color it. Now this little girl took me quite some time to color. Sometimes I think it's fun and therapeutic to spend that time coloring, but I don't want to mess her up. So I need to be sure to mask her in a way that I can be sure I don't do any damage to her. Now I could do a fussy cut paper mask, but we're going to put lots of spray on top of this and the spray would probably damage that mask and I would risk it like seeping through that paper mask. So today I wanted to try rubber cement on top. Now you could get a masking fluid, there are products out there like that, but most of us have rubber cement at home or can easily get it even at the grocery store. So that's what I'm going to use today. This is what the liquid masking product looks like here on the right. This is a little bit harder to find, but it does work super well too. And I know a lot of artists use it. For this technique, you would use these products the same, so you could follow the same steps that I'm showing you here. Now for rubber cement, I like to have a paintbrush that I have designated just for rubber cement because it's going to get kind of icky, but I wanted a, a nice fine tip that I could paint this rubber cement on. I like to put a big glop of that rubber cement on my work surface because if you leave your jar open too long, it starts to get really thick. So I just put some on my work surface to pick up from. And I'm going to use this paintbrush to just cover her with a really nice coating of rubber cement. It doesn't really matter if it's even, but you want to make sure it's thick enough that you're completely protecting her. Now this seems a little crazy after I've spent a good 20 minutes coloring her to put something on top of her, but I promise this will come off with no problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint her on. Again, this brush I've designated just for rubber cement. I will clean it off with some water and a baby wipe when I'm done, but I am afraid that the brush might be ruined, so it's good to just get an inexpensive fine brush for this technique. Now I usually take a big glob of the rubber cement, put it towards the center of the image, and then push it and pull it out towards the fine edges, the little tips of the image. 
And you'll see that this really isn't that hard to do. And by looking in the light, you'll be able to see that you have covered every area of her. Again, you want to try to stay in the lines because anything that goes outside of the lines will end up white because this is going to completely mask. With a fine brush, I'm even able to get into the tiny little areas of her hair here. And this will completely protect it when we put lots of inking on top. Now, I could use glossy accents or clear embossing for this little girl too, but what's going to happen is after we're done, we can rub this rubber cement away and you'll end up with a nice matte finish, like it was nothing was ever there, whereas the glossy accents and the clear embossing would leave a little bit of shine. So after you've let her dry for a while, and she's got to be completely dry, it's time to come in and add some ink. Now she's going to look blue, it's okay, <laughs> you'll see some of that color on her because that rubber cement will protect her. Putting lots of Distress Ink on here for a night sky, I used Salty Ocean and Seedless Preserves. And now I want to do some spray. I have this Hero Arts White Spray, I love this stuff, and I'm just going to tap little droplets onto it. So I'm not actually spraying because I want to see little like stars, little dots, not a mist. So I'm putting this all over her and look at my, my little girl's getting covered with splatter, but I promise it'll be okay. Now I'm coming in with flicks of a perfect pearl and water mix. I just put some perfect pearls, that pigment powder, into a mist bottle. And now I'm putting some drops of this on top. What's nice about this is that it gives a pearly water and when it comes in contact with that distress ink background, it reacts and creates those cool stars. Now I'm coming in with some Silver Hero Arts Mist and adding droplets of that. You don't need to do all these layers, but I really wanted a lot of dimension to that night sky. And you can use any kind of products that you may have, any kind of mist. I just take the cap off and, and just flick it from the little tube and it does these little droplets. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of buff her off. While she's still wet, just kind of take a little bit of that ink off so that it doesn't sit on top. And then we're going to let this background completely dry. Now once she's completely dry, she's completely dry here, the background's dry, it's time to take that rubber cement off. I use a clean cloth and I switch the part of the cloth that I'm using often because I don't want to start rubbing any color onto her. But look how easy that rubber cement just rubs off. You can see it kind of peeling up there. And then I'll just clean this cloth and be able to use it again. But look at she's perfectly protected from all that inked background that we did. I just think the rubber cement is so effective and such an easy product to use. It's inexpensive and again you can get it pretty much anywhere. So that's the third way and probably what I think is the most fun way to mask a detailed image to do an inked background behind it. Again I think it would have been tough to cut a paper mask of her out and some of that liquid might have seeped through and hurt our image. So there you have three different ways to create masking for an inked background on stamped images. I promise I will show more of these techniques in use in future videos, so be sure to come back. Now if you are interested in the many products I used here, I have them linked below in my YouTube description. There's multiple sources there, so you can check them all out. Or you can head over to my blog at jennifermaguireinc.com. I will have much more information there and also links to Split Coast Stampers where you can find other great tutorials. Thanks so much for stopping by.